So, uh, uh, who is happening to happen then that? This is kind of like a recap of it. So, the curriculum would more or less be will discuss the need of data scientists and uh, will differentiate what is data analysis, data mining, and uh, what is machine learning. Uh, types of analytics, right? Uh, what is the life cycle of analytics, data science projects, and all this. So then we'll discuss more on the data. Like what are the types of data? How can we collect the data from? And uh, where do we uh, store the data? How can we uh, assure the quality of the data and uh, integrity of the data? Then we'll more discuss on the tools that we can use in the data science analysis, like. Uh, we'll be we'll be using the uh, tools to collect the data and then store the data in the form of Hadoop and uh, uh, for analysis and visualization part we'll go with uh, Python again. So we'll we'll go with the tools in detail. What are the types of tools and all, and then we'll be focusing more on statistics part because I feel this is more important to understand the machine learning algorithms which are built upon the statistics part right and then we'll discuss the basics of r or python any of these languages in one of it and uh, i will know the basic features what is a data frame what is a list how do we store data in a data frame what are the uh, operations on a data frame what are the things that we can perform on the data frame? And then we'll uh, look at packages like uh, pandas and uh, numpy, the basic ones. And uh, looking upon the problem, we can uh, pick different functions from different packages in the more ahead. After this, we'll more or less be discussing the machine learning algorithms. I would say. Uh, the data science can be implemented more or less using these machine learning algorithms. We we'll know what are the types of machine learning algorithms that is like supervised or unsupervised. And we have kind of like uh, segregated algorithms, and that we will go uh, one after the other and uh, with a detailed example of a problem statement for every algorithm and then discuss it. Right. So this is what the curriculum more or less goes with. So before I start, and uh, I, I just wanted to have a quick round of introduction of you three guys, and uh, I uh, like what is your expectation from this course? This is all what I wanted to know. Quick. Kind of like 30 seconds or one minute is more than enough for me. I don't want your waste that, so I don't want to waste your time. They can come on while they can start. Okay, um, that's fine. So, let me start with the introduction of the data lines. So, data science is more or less a study of signs of data where we will know what can be done with the data or the insights of the data and uh, 
uh, we can know what can be done with the existing data, that is like we can credit from the data insights. Right? So uh, we, we store the data over the databases and uh, we will need to pull out the data from the database out for our analysis or we can plug into the database and pull the, uh, collect the data from the database directly and do our analysis. Right? So after after we pull out the data, we will need to Perform or write a program to find the insights insight from the insights from the data. So, so foundation of it comes from a problem statement that is more or less like a human intuition to find out what's happening with the data and. Uh, Make his life better uh, when it comes when it comes to an organization perspective to increase the uh, company growth. Every, every everyone wants to have a better company or uh, have a better sales in the organization. So, what can be done to increase the sales or what can be done to uh, grow the company? Would be the main uh, perspective of the organization. So. They'll have all the sales data, all the employees' data. So, is it like increasing the salaries of the employees would grow the company, or increasing the uh, production of the products would increase in the sales of the company? So, what, what way would help the organization grow better? So, these sorts of insights can be found. So. Data science is more or less like uh, I can say it is science which helps the human to stay better. So next, the artificial intelligence and business intelligence are uh, two areas where uh, the world is growing like an I'm not sure. Business intelligence is more or less, I can say it is restricted to features in a way uh, the organization or entity can uh, have a beautiful representation of the dashboards or reports, have a better view of the uh, data that is, I can say more or less, it's a descriptive analytics. Um, the, the best uh, business intelligence tool are, uh, I can figure out if you are currently in the market or uh, tablet or information. So we pull out the data and have the descriptive stats of the data that we have filled out. So BI is more or less having the pictorial representation of the existing data. Artificial intelligence is the Best example that I can say for an artificial intelligence is the uh, Ola, the Uber app, right? So this or Google Maps, which actually shows us the optimal distance between the two locations. And let's say if you are going with the Uber app for Ola for, for Uber Pool or for Ola Share. So it can show you the longest distance and uh, that can be shared. But uh, we have also the optimal distance points and uh, uh, the ride is shared across people, right? So the algorithm is written in a way that uh, we can have the minimal distance between two points and uh, your ride is shared across that distance, right? So this is the, we, we more or less get that get to that point using our machine learning algorithms. Now, 
I would I would more or less come on uh, data analysis is again something in line to our business intelligence. So we we do the analysis on the data what we have and come out to a conclusion saying this is what we we can come out from the or we can have insight from the data. And, uh, data mining. Data mining is we we come out to the conclusions. We can prepare rules uh, saying if if I have brought this, then uh, there would be a scenario that I can also buy this once. So we can prepare rules uh, by having the antecedent and precedent uh, values. So we can come to that conclusion with the help of uh, the data mining. Right? So that is one of the main, uh, main scenario that we can see when we, when we are uh, performing the unsupervised algorithms, we more like to the data mining part to gather the rules and then uh, find the frequency of the rules that are occurring from the data and then figure out or suggest the users saying if, if I'm going to buy a product A, then I can also buy a product B. Right. So next, the machine learning is machine learning is a we do have a number of algorithms. So what we do what what we do with that machine learning algorithm is we have an algorithm A. We apply the algorithm A on on the data. So once we apply the algorithm on the data, we get some sort of results. So machine learning part is something where you apply the algorithm on continuous data so that the machine learns itself to tune the data in a better way and give you the results in a better way. So your test data, so when you're applying the model on the data, you more or less divide the data into different data sets. Like you do not apply all the data on the population. You more or less apply the data on the sample set and then you segregate or find the results from the sample set and evaluate the data so similarly so you'll you'll divide your data into different data sets like uh, test data set train data set validation data data set so you'll divide the data into three data sets and uh, first you'll apply your data uh, your lab apply your model on the test data and then you'll train the model with the uh, train data set and then you'll validate the model with the validation data set so when you have a hundred rows of data set you'll more or less divide the data into three sets test train validate test is you'll put 30 rows for the test data 30 rows for the train data and 40 rows for the validation data. So once you find your validation data is accurate or your validation results are correct. So you'll you'll see or you'll conclude that your model is accurate enough to uh, perform the actions that you have desired in the model. So you'll the first thing is you'll from the population, you'll collect the sample data set. You'll divide the sample data set into three parts. So any any model that we are going to build will more or less do it in a similar way. If at all the data is very small, the data set is very small, so we'll directly go with the sample set or population set instead of going to the sample set. Right? So machine learning's motto is so you apply the model on a population or a sample set and going forward, what happens would be like your, your new data would come in and you would need to predict or do the operation on the data. So the data itself needs to, or the machine itself needs to learn or tune the data in a better way or tune the algorithm in a better way 
better example for this would be your spam filter in the emails. So let's say if in a Gmail, if if you, if at all you have segregated an an email as a spam. So whenever you open any open a new Gmail account, everything will come and fall into your uh, inbox. So, so slowly you start segregating your emails and uh, put few emails as a spam. And then whenever that similar kind of emails come in, they directly go and fall into the spam folder rather than coming into the inbox. So this is one of the beautiful examples for the machine learning. So Gmail server itself learns this particular email is going to be a spam and then it puts into a spam filter rather than putting it in the inbox. All right. So next, the analytics life cycle is the analytics life cycle is is more or less always the same. So we have segregated or figured out we have four types of analytics. One is the descriptive, the other one is diagnostic, this is the other one is predictive and prescriptive. The name itself helps us what happens with what type of analytics. So this is the higher classification of types of analytics. And when we are trying to perform any analytics, we go across five stages. Right. The first one is we collect the data. So there would be data across the websites which we need to pull in and segregate at one place and then uh, transform it the data. So the first one is collecting the data from different parts or different websites or different databases and store it at one place. So once we collect the data across, then we transform the data. So the transformation of the data is we'll have noises in the data. We'll have commas, full stops, punctuation marks, and uh, the stop words. The basic the stop words would be like your ORLs and uh, 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 the or all the the basic words in the English dictionary will come and fall into the stop words, right? So you'll clean all that stop words from your data. So that makes no sense. Let's say if you are trying to collect the Twitter data and uh, do analysis of word count on the Twitter data, saying what is the word that is being tweeted more across the world. So when you are trying to do it, you are punctuating your, your stop words would come in between. So that would that would increase the uh, word count. A, A would have been repeated more, or an would have been repeated more. So that doesn't make more sense because these are very common words when they when they used to tweet, right? So uh, we more or less need to transform our our data to make the data ready for building the model. So then we'll choose the model. What type of model needs to build? For a word count, it is will more or less take every word and uh, place it into the basket and every new word that comes in you should go and append it and the count should increase. So that is kind of like a model that we build. So once we build the model, we then test the efficiency. We first uh, put it on a test data, then we'll or let's train the, uh, it's kind of like different tests of validation that are appended on the data. So once we train the data, or uh, we can find the efficiency with the val uh, validation data. So we'll have three data sets. We do, we do the model building on the three data sets and then we can visualize the result. <clears throat> so we more or less perform all these operations using the Python or, or we can do that. Right. So um, once once we visualize the result, we come to a conclusion saying 
before realizing we have the efficiency part. Efficiency is somewhat that can be found out using the uh, few statistic tests like our chi square, chi square test, and uh, uh, yeah, like chi square test. Again. We can talk, we can actually do the uh, data efficiency or uh, model model efficiency test, and then we can visualize the results uh, and and we can display it onto the website using our plugins and if, if we are realizing on the studio itself then that that's a better thing then anyway we'll need to export the data we have the export options as well you we can export the data to the pdf we can export the results to the uh, excel csv format whatever format it is so as in we can also export the results to the uh, website so all, all that we need to do is we need to create a uh, create a, a website and then connect that to the, that website to our program and then pull up the results from there as simple as that right so this is more or less the introduction part of uh, the analytics before i move further i just wanted to know if, if at all you have any doubt or any add-ons that you wanted to make to the anyone anyone want to volunteer and just put in something Give me, give me one minute, guys, and I'll just, I'm just trying to pull out a, a PDF. So um, this is our analytics pipeline of the framework that I can call. All right. So this is what we will more or less be doing while building a model. I, I hope you are able to see the screen. Right. Yeah. So. We'll, we'll know the requirement from the user, the end user, right? That would be so. As you are all the developers, you are fitting into the uh, the development model or look out the development model at least for the career. So we'll it goes something like we are requirement gathering, then doing the analysis on the requirement. Uh, develop the requirements and then test the requirements and apply it into production. It, it goes across the different stages, right? So we more or less have similar stages with the analytics as well, right? So we'll know the basic requirements from the customer because this is what it drives the, uh, the complete project. And uh, once we have the better understanding of the requirement, then we'll, we'll know where the data needs to be pulled from. Like uh, we will know all the data points or data nodes that are available. So we'll pull out the data and then we'll understand the data. So what is the data about? We get a better insight when we go to the data, what are the variables that are present in the data and when we 
figure out what is the variable that needs to be chosen when we are doing the analysis and build a model, right? So then we prepare the data, which is more or less taking the more time, right? So building the model and uh, it, it is more or less taking less time when we can figure it out here, right? So preparing the data takes the most time for any data scientist to build a model. That's because I'll, I can, uh, I, I have said this example earlier as well. Let's say if you are having a, an insurance data of 1,000 or 1, 1, million, uh, 1 million guys, and uh, the variables that you have are the name, age, sex, salary, address, uh, the country location, the, uh, the city location, the pin code, what what salary plan does he fall into, what different types of incidences does he, does he hold in, and uh, how many family members are there, how many family members hold the insurance. So you have different set of parameters of that particular person, what, what is his height, how many vehicles does he hold, right? So you have different set of variables. So we more or less have come came on and the second one, right? So the first one would be, let's say if you wanted to pull out the data, you'll log into some uh, insurance website, pay money to him and then uh, Pull the data from that particular website, any uh, LIC or any United Insura, Insurance or ICICI, Plumber or any any insurance company. You log in, you pay money, and then uh, you plug into the database and then pull out the data. So that is where you collect the data from. And then second one is you understand the data. What are the parameters that are available for that particular data? And third one is prepare the data. So while you are preparing the data, you you provide your utmost concentration on this because we'll know what are the parameters available. So we will need to know what are the parameters that needs to be excluded for our model building. All right. So let's say we have 20 uh, variables and we will need to pull out or more or less all that 20 variables does not uh, describe the data, complete data, right? There are few variables which can be excluded. So what we'll do is we'll exclude that particular variables and pull out only the variable which describe the data, like my age, my salary, the, the number of vehicles I hold, right? So we'll pull out all that particular variables only and then build a model which predicts if any new user comes in, if it is going to take the uh, insurance or not. Right? So after I'm after I build a model, I evaluate my model by, by using my model efficiencies. Right? So once I evaluate, I, I take the next action, what needs to be done or what needs to be done to tune my model better. So let's say once I've evaluated, I've found my model is 93% efficient. So I have to make my model efficient or uh, build an inefficient model, uh, which increases my efficiency from 93 to 95 or 95 to 98, or 98 to 99. So according to the market standard, if I say my model is 97% or 98% efficient, that's fine. But the practical scenario would be, it, it always lies in between 70 and 90. So it, it, it also depends on the data that you're working on. If you're working on a large data set, I'm 200% pretty sure that your efficiency will always fall between 70 and 90. 
So it actually starts with 70. So even if your model is 70% efficient, then you can say that you have a better model built. Right? So your taking action part is go 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 for a new model and build it, build a new model if, if all your efficiency is not accurate. Right? So the this was from my previous session. Okay, so the, I just wanted to show a couple of more examples from this, right? So where, where are the, what are the use cases of undertaken? Where, where are people using it? So one better example from the latest scenarios is, uh, US elections or uh, or, in, or even the 2014 Indian elections have used Facebook data to analyze what would be the trend or which party would get the majority of the votes. Right? So that is one sort of the better use case done by uh, Cambridge Analytica or by using the Facebook data with the process incorrect but that is what it has happened practically hmm. right so we will also know the uh, like like climate tracking and all so how is it changing across the world across the websites you can find out what is the uh, climate prediction let's say if you are uh, looking at the weather.com you will know the weather prediction for next 10 days the next one month. How is that done? So you'll have the data stored for 20 or 30 years uh, in the weather weather.com website uh, weather.com database, and uh, they would more or less pick the temperatures for today's date, that is 11th of April, across past 20 years, and then find a trend of it. How how is it fluctuating? How the temperature is fluctuating per hour and what time and what temperature do we have? And then they would come to a conclusion saying this is uh, at this point of time, this would be the temperature. It might change with the current scenario. And if it changes, they would appropriately update the temperatures. So uh, we, we have scenarios where uh, like we have sunny sunny weather and suddenly we have uh, heavy drenching rain. So how, how it happens and then we'll need to update that accordingly, right? So when, when we update it saying we have rain now, so it automatically changes the climate for next few hours and next few days as well, right? So that is more or less done by using our uh, machine learning algorithms again right so this sponsored approach is more or less given by yahoo at first where whenever you are trying to search earlier you used to see the uh, ads coming in on the website in Google earlier, I don't think so. We have ads coming onto the Google search now, but we used to get the search uh, ads before. So the, the companies more or less used to pay Google for the ads and uh, uh, if at all you're searching Amazon, then you would get Amazon related results at the first and whoever pays the ads, their results would be displayed on the top. 
So this was kind of sponsored approach, which was followed earlier. So then our recommenders, uh, I hope you might have gone to Netflix or uh, Amazon Prime or Amazon website where you get some sort of recommendations whenever you are trying to buy a product or whenever you are trying to buy or uh, view a movie, right? So these are more or less the basic use cases of uh, the YouTube uh, where you are trying to watch one video and you get different suggestions on right uh, saying the next video is this you totally wanted to watch. So what happens is whenever you are trying to watch, watch a video on YouTube, it gets saved in the history of YouTube and whenever you log into the website of YouTube, you will more or less shown similar kind of videos right let's say you're watching a video of narendra modi speech so whenever you are logging onto the youtube website next you are suggested with narendra modi's uh, speeches with a five to six narendra modi speeches and then the next one would be uh, next channel would be more or less of a, a bjp video uh, of any other uh, speaker right that's because narendra modi the first one is because you have a uh, view narendra modi and the second uh, search of bjps would be because narendra modi is a bjp politician and you might want to or like to see the uh, speeches of further uh, bjp politicians so you get similar recommendations as like that right so this more or less we have discussed this, right? And uh, we have different uh, data mining or machine learning algorithms. That is cluster. I mean, uh, uh, the, these all come and fall into the supervised or unsupervised. Have mentioned in the curriculum already, right? So the main challenges that we see here is when we are doing it on a large scale, or when we are looking or trying to do it on a very large data set. And uh, the second one would be the dimensionality. So dimensionality is something that I've discussed with the insurance example, where you have data or your conclusions distributed across different variables so then it's hard to find out which variable needs to be chosen for our model build right so next one is heterogeneous data so you are you are pulling out the data across the uh, different websites one is in txt format one is in pdf format one is in word format so we cannot perform the analysis on three different formats. What we we'll need to do is we we'll need to pull in all the three into one single format and then pull out the data from there, right? So if, when the heterogeneous data exists, we we'll need to make it homogeneous and then pull it or build the model from there, right? So the quality of the data is at most important where and will remove all the noises that is what it is. And uh, matching and matching and linking and privacy is matching and linking is you'll figure out or find out if, if at all your uh, full of data is being matched with the existence ones. I mean, there's no data lost in between and uh, you are linking it to the correct uh, correct values and then uh, your privacy is you're not you're not misusing the data or no intruder is coming in between and uh, pulling out or uh, misusing the data like this this privacy concern exists everywhere in any platform that you're working on. So it is more or less like you are securing your data, which Facebook couldn't do and uh, Zuckerberg is posting apologies for the mistake that Facebook has done right now, right? So 
this is more or less the uh, challenges that we are going to face. So we have uh, univariate uh, models, we have bivariate models, we have multivariate models. So dimensionality is also a major concern when we are going to build a model. So going well, while we are going forward, we'll see what are the uh, or how a bivariate or how a univariate or a multivariate model differentiates and what can be done, right? So we we more or less will start from tomorrow with the basics of the data and uh, the basics of statistics. So we'll we'll finish the uh, data types of data. What what our how can a data quality be assured and also we can we'll finish that tomorrow and we'll start the statistics basics part tomorrow right so any any doubts on the session so far please raise questions to me and i'm not happy to answer Like to have a interactive session between us so that I can give you a better answers or give better give better class to be basically. Anyone, any questions or no? Okay, please. Uh, I, I would actually suggest you guys to. Uh, Please discuss with me or be interactive in the session. Uh, pose questions or uh, ask something so that I can answer it in a better way. It helps both of us. Right. I, I would actually uh, like to know your uh, work profile so that I can suggest some sort of uh, analytics work that you can uh, perform in your organization. Right. even though you might be working on a different stream. So that's how I basically started with uh, years ago. So uh, I, I, would, I would like to suggest you guys that you can pull out some sort of analytics work and start learning from the current organization itself, rather than learning things and looking for opportunities and then figure out a way to point. We can start the work from day one. So that is what my point was. Uh, I, I would actually, uh, like to know your work profile and uh, your expectations from this particular course. To what extent are you uh, are you looking or uh, are you trying to gain from this particular course? That's because I'll, I'll need to uh, set up my bar as well. So if all your expectation is on a scale of ten, uh, you're, you're putting it on on ten, then I'll need to set my bar to 15 so that I can deliver it more, right? So I I clearly wanted to know what, what do you want to learn from this session and what do you want to become after this particular period, what do you want to try doing uh, in the market? So what I'll do is I'll, I'll stop the session for today. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the basics of statistics and uh, the data tomorrow. We'll, we'll kick off from tomorrow. Any concerns? Please, please tag it to me.